We're at the third part of our lesson. We're at 11.3c. We're going to talk about cube roots. If we know the area of a square, here it's given that it's 16 centimeters squared, we can find the length of a side by taking the square root of the area. We know the formula for the area of a square is side squared. It would be the side times the side. If we're given 16 as the area, we could take the square root of 16 and find that the side is 4 centimeters. For the volume, we would have s cubed, s times s times s. If we're given that it's 27 centimeters cubed, we could take the cube root of 27. That would be 3 centimeters. 3 times 3 times 3. So we know our side length would be 3 centimeters. When we see this, we know this is the square root of 16. It's the same thing as if there was a little 2 here. That's the square root of 16. It equals 4. When there's a little 3 here, it's read as the cube root of 8. The cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the third power, 2 cubed, it equals 8. This little number here is called the index, and of course this underneath the radical sign is the radicand. To find the side length of a cube, we need to find the cube root of 27. If it's giving us the volume is 27, the cube root of 27 is 3 because 3 cubed is equal to 27. So the side length of this cube is 3 centimeters. We have a little index 3 here. It's the cube root of 27, which equals 3. The volume of a cube is 64 meters cubed. Find the side length of the cube. So we know that the volume is going to equal the side cubed. That means we need to find the cube root of 64. Well, 4 times 4 times 4, 4 cubed, is equal to 64. The cube root of 64 is 4. The side length is 4 meters. If we're given a volume of 1 centimeter cubed, then we need to find the cube root of 1, which is 1 centimeter. It's 1 centimeter times 1 centimeter times 1 centimeter. A cube-shaped box has a volume of 729 inches cubed. How long is each side? We find the cube root of 729. 9 times 9 times 9 is equal to 729. So we know the side length is 9 inches. 9 cubed is equal to 729. If the index of the radical is even, remember the index is that little number up here, if it's even, the radical can have both positive and negative roots. For the square root of 16, we just don't write the little 2. We just leave it empty like this. But we know there's a 2 there. We know the index is 2 for a square root. It would be 4 squared or negative 4 squared because positive 4 times positive 4 will equal 16 and a negative 4 times negative 4 equals a positive 16. Here we've got the fourth root of 16. We could have a positive 2 to the 4th power or a negative 2 to the 4th power because when we multiply it all out, it'll still be a positive 16. Here is the fourth root of 0 0.0256. We could have a positive 0.4 to the 4th power or a negative 0.4 to the 4th power. For the sixth root of 729, we could have 3 to the 6th power or a negative 3 to the 6th power. This would be the nth root of x. This is the fourth root of 16. That would be 2. The negative nth root of x, the negative fourth root of 16. It would be a negative 2. 
You might also see it written as the kth root of a, or the kth root of x. So there might be a little k there instead of an n. You can watch my Algebra 1 video, 11.3c, and it's about what are cube roots also, just like this video. And there's going to be links to Algebra 2, 7.1a, b, and c. This 7.1c is really informative. It talks about kth roots and odd and even roots. That could really help you. Our next video lesson is going to be the volume of spheres, 11.4a. We're going to finish it with the second part with surface area of spheres, 11.4b, before we move on to chapter 12, which is all about circles. So geometry is connected to algebra. So that's why I have links to these algebra videos right here to help you out. And watch them. They might help you, okay? I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a really great day. And I think you can do this, and I'll see you next time. Bye.